I was asked the other day to review this Word document that my friend gave to me. And it got me thinking about four of the quick little tips that I wanted to share on this channel about the sorts of things that I look for when I'm reviewing a Word document. Because here on Engineered Upgrade, I like to share the sorts of tools, tips and tricks to help people develop professional skills and business skills and to improve themselves in the workplace. So my name is Chris and in this video we're going to look at those four tips that I like to use. So the very first one is to come up here on, I've got it on the screen here, to come up and select the paragraph marks button. Now that's going to show up all the formatting on the document, what my friend sent me was his CV, it's going to show up all the formatting on the CV to give you an idea of uh, where there might be some slight misalignment. So I'll try to show you here on the screen, but can you see how uh, there's a bit of weird misalignment here between the word responsibilities across the two lines. Now that's because he's used space, the space key to, to try to move, this, uh, move the lines across from the left without using the proper way that Word recommends to do it. And, and so we've uncovered this by turning on the paragraph key. And what, and what I'm going to suggest to him is to remove these spaces and rely either on uh, this paragraph button or on the tabs that is used there. So uh, a little bonus tip here is don't use spaces for, for left alignment. <laughs> Always use tabs or better yet, use the paragraph or styles button instead. So the, the first tip is to make sure when you're reviewing a Word document to put on this paragraph marks button. So our second tip is to not rely on the built-in spelling and grammar check. So my, you can use it of course, but don't rely on it solely. Uh, my friend here, you can probably tell by my accent that we're Australian, and he's got it set to United States English. So for example, under his key achievements, he's picked up localized range as one of the key words that he's focusing on here, and localized is being spelt correctly for an Australian audience and this CV is being used for an Australian job. However, uh, it's been picked up as an error due to uh, being set to United States English, not having the Z there instead. Now, one of the key things I've, I've picked up with Word recently is that it's looking at a lot of grammar errors that I don't consider erroneous. Now, I, I'm trying to find a good example of that in here, but for example, uh, you, you might see where he's used decision making like this, that Word has highlighted that as a grammar error, error and I don't necessarily agree that uh, it's, it should be hyphenated, I think it's suggesting in this case. Uh, one of the other examples I found recently was I was putting together a document called a particular specification, uh, one of the engineering documents that we use to start off a project, putting together this particular specification and Word kept highlighting as an error particular specification. And I said, hey, that's not right. Word wanted to remove the word particular and say, uh, say in a sentence where this is the particular specification for such and such, Word would suggest remove the word particular as it's redundant. However, that's not the case because the name of the document is a particular specification and it's unacceptable to remove. So I'd recommend paying a bit of caution to Word's grammar suggestions in particular, but spelling as well, that they may not necessarily be appropriate for the sort of document that you're reviewing. So our third tip then is to check the flow of the document over pages. Now, this one is uh, important if your document's going to be printed because it doesn't, this is where it can, uh, it can cause a bit of a trouble because your document can be arranged a certain way on the computer screen and can look all okay on the computer screen, but then when you go to print it, it just doesn't look right, something looks a bit odd. And the key example I wanted to highlight here from my friend's document was uh, this gap that appears between responsibilities and the points underneath. What's happened is he's allowed this point to flow across the page and because it's on the computer screen, he hasn't thought too much about it, even though there is a page break there. But when, if, if someone were to print this document and were to read the CV, they'll get, it just doesn't look very nice when at the bottom of one page is a heading that says responsibilities, as I put up on the screen there, but the following bullet points are on the next page. Highly don't recommend it if you're putting together a professional document like a CV. So the easy way to fix this one is to select the heading, uh, which I'll just do now, select the heading, come up to paragraph, uh, there, paragraph settings, uh, come to this line and page breaks and click keep with next. 
Now that will make the uh, heading keep with the paragraph after it. Now, as you can see, I've just caused the same problem again. So we have to, in this case, we have to repeat, come up to paragraph, keep with next, click OK. Now with a CV, you can kind of get away with not doing this. However, in any professional document, I'd recommend using the styles to set that up, to set up the Word document to make sure that all your paragraphs flow in the right way and all your headings are represented properly. I did a whole video about how to format a professional report in Word and I'll leave a link to that in the description, description down below. Uh, so the, that's the third tip then, to make sure that you've checked that the way that paragraphs flow across pages especially if your document's going to be printed. Now, there are some other tricks that I'd like to use to ensure that flow, such as if you use tables or figures in your report or your document, you can resize those tables or figures to try to get the paragraph flow correct. One thing I don't recommend is to use the uh, spacing, the line spacing settings. Try to avoid using these line spacing settings to, to adjust that flow. It's gonna cause you a lot of headaches down the line and it doesn't really achieve the goal. It doesn't give Word the correct instructions on how to put that information on the screen. So I had a colleague who would always try to uh, adjust the line spacing and, and spacing before and after paragraphs to try to get that flow right. However, I really don't recommend it. It caused him a lot of headaches and he had to keep going back and doing it over and over. So the fourth tip is not to go overboard with track changes. I've put up on the screen here, uh, one of the changes that I wanted to make to my friend's CV, one of the changes I wanted to recommend, and it's a bit of a mess to read. You can't easily figure out what's going on here because it's a mix of words. Now, if I were to switch off the track changes, it would look okay, the sentence would be fine. However, what I'd recommend instead is that when you have to change a whole sentence like this, I'd recommend instead putting in a new paragraph and just typing it out then deleting the previous one. So for example, uh, let's say I wanted to, yeah, change this one. I, instead of making all these changes word by word, I type out the whole sentence and then uh, make that the track change. So uh, I, I've turned track changes off on this document, but to, if this sentence is the new one, then to go through and simply delete the old one. When that's reflected as a track change, it will look a lot cleaner that you've deleted a whole sentence and put a new one in, that sort of, this sort of uh, change here, where you've gone through and, and maybe added a few letters or changed a word or two is okay if you've done it once or twice. But here where I've done it half a dozen times in one sentence, it just becomes a mess. I had a colleague who, we had a timetable, a schedule throughout the day of, of a particular activity, and she went through and adjusted everything by 15 minutes. Uh, so where it ticked over an hour, there was a track change for the hour and a track change for the minutes over and over again, and then someone else had come through once more and adjusted some of them by 30 minutes. And it was just crazy trying to figure out from the track changes what was going on. Now, of course, we could turn off change tracking and it would show up the, the complete sentence. However, uh, it, it, track changes were important for the rest of the, the schedule that was being done there. And it was just inappropriate to turn off track changes, but it was a mess for the times. And I'd highly recommend that any time track changes are starting to be complicated, simply delete the whole thing you're trying to change and put a new one in below it. So they're the four tips that I'd like to share with you about what I look for in a Word document. So that's making sure you turn on the paragraph marks at the top there, not relying on the inbuilt uh, spelling and grammar check to make sure that you're tracking, uh, to make sure that you're looking at the sorts of information as it flows over the page and then to not go overboard with track changes. Just bear in mind that when you're changing a document with track changes on, that the changes themselves are important. So try to think about how you're presenting those changes and if you're going to change a lot of things in one sentence, maybe it's just better to delete the sentence and type it out again. So if you're interested in how Engineered Upgrade can help you further, there are two ways that you can go about that. Number one, hit that like button down there and YouTube will start suggesting more of these sorts of tools, tips, tricks and processes that I'm sharing to help you improve your professional and business skills. Number two, follow along with these videos as I release them because it'll share with you those helpful tools, tips, tricks and improved processes as well that I'm developing and sharing here that I've developed over my years as an engineer and a consultant that will help you with your professional and business skills. My name's Chris and hopefully I'll see you in those next videos.